Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. A day before yesterday, OpenAI announced their ChatGPT 4.0, which has now vision capabilities and it's a lot more open to the free users. And just yesterday, Google came up with their own version and not just that, they came up with a lot more stuff. Now let's go ahead and look into what did they have to offer because it's a lot of confusing stuff. Inside their company, they use a lot of different names and terminologies which are not very familiar to an average user. So summarizing it can be a little bit difficult, but don't worry, I have done that for you. We will be discussing seven different things that Google announced and I will share the details with you. So first of all, let's talk about the Gemini. Now the Gemini model now has an upgrade, which means you will be able to use 1 million tokens of input context. But what does that mean? It means that you can use 750,000 words to input in that model. And how much exactly is that? So if you take all of the Harry Potter books and combine them and put it in the model, that would be around 750,000 words. So that's a lot of words. And not only that, they are planning to increase that slowly to 2 million tokens as well. So I don't know what people are going to search, but that is something to take note of. Then they are also releasing a Gemini flash model, which will be a lighter weight model, which is aimed towards mobile devices so that it can be used natively. So you can keep asking those weird questions in privacy right from your phone. Next up, we have the Project Astra. It will allow you to interact with your AI model, not just with text, but with images as well and videos. So you will be able to open up your camera and discuss what exactly is present within your environment. And not only that, it will also have a memory. So what it saw earlier, you could ask questions about that as well. So it's not just taking one frame, it is recognizing all the frames and it is understanding the scenario rather than just one single image. For a long time, we've wanted to build a universal AI agent that can be truly helpful in everyday life. Building on our Gemini model, we've developed agents that can process information faster by continuously encoding video frames, combining the video and speech input into a timeline of events, and caching this for efficient recall. Okay, let's do some tests. Tell me when you see something that makes sound. I see a speaker, which makes sound. What is that part of the speaker called? That is the tweeter. It produces high frequency sounds. Give me a creative alliteration about these. Creative crayons color cheerfully. They certainly craft colorful creations. What does that part of the code do? This code defines encryption and decryption functions. It seems to use AESCBC encryption to encode and decode data based on a key and an initialization vector, IV. That's right. What neighborhood do you think I'm in? This appears to be the King's Cross area of London. It is known for its railway station and transportation connections. Do you remember where you saw my glasses? Yes, I do. Your glasses were on the desk near a red apple. <laughs> what can I add here to make this system faster? Adding a cache between the server and database could improve speed. So in the third category, they discuss generative models. The first one was ImageGen 3. Now this is uh, comparable to DALL-E or you can say stable diffusion that allows us to create images. Now Google did not have a very good version of this before, but now they are improving. They are calling it more realistic and better in terms of the visual accuracy, but we still have to figure out whether this works as well as the other models. Now they also showed some musical AI models and then they came to the big part 
which is Veo. Veo is the alternative to Sora. While the video quality is not similar to what we saw in Sora, Veo is still very impressive and it can generate 60 seconds or more. So both of these models, Sora and Veo, they are not accessible to the public yet. But the good thing is that there is a waiting list for Veo. So if you want to get access to that, you can actually apply for it and maybe you will get the chance to try it out. On the other hand, we don't even know when Sora will be released and whether it's as good as they claim it to be. Now they also discuss Trillium, which is not very exciting for regular users because these are TPUs like GPUs for accelerating for computation. These TPUs are now improved up to 4.7% more efficient than before. Not only that, Google Cloud Services will now add NVIDIA's Maxwell chip, which will allow much better performance than before. Another great feature that they came up with is the AI search. They call it the AI overview. Thanks to Gemini, we can create much more powerful search experiences, including within our products. Let me show you an example in Google Photos. Say you're at a parking station ready to pay, but you can't recall your license plate number. Before, you could search photos for keywords, and then scroll through years worth of photos looking for the right one. Now, you can simply ask photos. It knows the cars that appear often, it triangulates which one is yours and just tells you the license plate number. Then they also mentioned workspace enhancements. Now, if you're a freelancer or a small business, you really want to focus on your craft and not on bookkeeping and logistics. So let's go to her inbox and take a look. Lots of unread emails. Let's click on the first one. It's got a PDF that's an attachment from a hotel as a receipt and I see a suggestion in the side panel. Help me organize and track my receipts. But with this automation, Gemini does the hard work of extracting all the right information from all the files and in that folder and generates this sheet for you. We can ask Gemini questions. Questions like, show me where the money is spent. Gemini not only analyzes the data from the sheet, but also creates a nice visual to help me see the complete breakdown by category. Lastly, they mentioned the Gemini app, which is available for Android, which will allow you to ask audio questions and even video questions right from your camera. So you can open it up and view it within your phone. But right now it's not available. Hopefully this will be available soon, later this year, which will allow us to know whether this works well or not. So some of the tech personnels, they have tried this out and they claim that it actually works. It's not like the Google disaster that happened earlier when they showed the actual demo, which was not real time, and they tried to disguise it as real time. So these were all the different things that were announced at the Google I.O. this year. There's a lot of exciting stuff and next week, Microsoft is also going to announce something, so we will be looking for that as well. So stay tuned, and hopefully all of this will go in the favor of the journal audience or the journal public. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, share it with your friends, and I will see you in the next one.